Kilmarnock, that's who. But they made it difficult for themselves when they met Cowden Beath at Rugby Park. Goal. Their counterparts at Brechin would be watching First Division football next season. They realised yesterday's game was crucial. If Kilmarnock lost and Stirling Albion won, Kilmarnock would stay in the second division. It was a tense affair. Match commentator, Jock Brown. Some familiar names in that Kilmarnock lineup with manager Jim Fleeting going for experience for the promotion bid with men like Dave McKinnon and Paul Flexney at the back and a striking force of John Sludden, Robert Riley and top scorer Willie Waters. And the best known player, of course, is Tommy Barnes, who's enjoying a new lease of life here at Rugby Park after 15 seasons and countless honours with Celtic. The league's loan system has paid off for Kilmarnock, with Bobby Geddes proving a vital last line of defence following his temporary transfer from Dundee. And not so many household names in that Cowden Beef lineup, but they have a real character in goal in Billy Lamont and strong, experienced central defenders in Eric Archibald and Glenn Kerr. And up front they have top scorer Sandy Ross, signed last year from Les Mahigo Juniors, and he'll be a major threat to the Killy defence, aided and abetted by fellow striker Graham Buckley, signed this season from Brecon City for a fee of £5,000. And the referee this afternoon, Mr Mike McGinley from Clydebank. So a tremendous atmosphere inside Rugby Park for this vital promotion match. A crowd of around 10,000 expected and certainly the atmosphere bears testimony to that kind of number. Cowden Beef here in some sense is to make up the numbers but they're in a very good spell of form themselves having lost only twice in their last 16 matches and they're being treated with total respect by the Kilmarnock management. So Cowden Beef in the old blue and Kilmarnock and those familiar Blue and white stripes, there's Glenn Kerr with the free kick. Spence challenging hard in the first chance of the match. Malone with that volley and Bobby Geddes was certainly exposed. Well, it came with the free kick from Glenn Kerr. A little bit of indecision here in defence. Paul Flexley beaten in the air, headed away by Paul, by Tom Spence. And the ball came across. It was taken first time on the volley by Malone, and that could so easily have been the opener. Played wide by Spence. Covering player is Archibald. Blocked by Riley. Down goes Riley, and the free kick's been given. Robert Riley, a very experienced player, and it was a little bit of slackness in defence there. Eric Archibald getting back. He won't be entirely happy with that. And a good chance from the set piece for Kilmarnock. He set Paul Flexney forward. Tommy Barnes will take it. There's the header! Flexney for Kilmarnock! Four minutes gone. There's a disaster for the Cowden Beef defence, a fine free kick from Tommy Barnes, but look at the space at the far post area for Paul Flexney, the downward header, and Kilmarnock are off to the perfect start. Barnes was the creator, and the goal scorer, former youth international, Paul Flexney. O'Reilly, formerly of Clyde, Hamilton, reunited in Meadowbank. And Raymond Gummery now with a chance to come forward. And Gummery again. And it was Riley going in looking for the second. The very busy player, Robert Riley, he was quickly in on this. And it was the forcing play of Raymond Gummery on the right which set this up. Trying to link up forward with Sludden, but got it back and then playing it across for Riley coming in. Here's Sludden, back with Barnes. So a good turn of pace here, Tommy Barnes is brought down by Spence. Now Barnes now, 33 years old, is showing a lot of pace here, taking on Billy Spence on the outside, making for the byline. Spence realised that he was beaten and there was a late tackle, and Barnes must have felt that. But after he making clear he will stand for no repetition. 
So this is an exact replica of the goal scoring position from earlier on. And there's Flexley again! This time a brilliant save from Lamont. Well, a crowded six shot box there as Burns flighted that across. Tate and Flexley were in for it. It appeared to be Sludden, in fact, to get the header in. Douglas going up there with Waters. Picked up by Porteous. Here's Riley clearing the box now with a great chance. And it's inches wide. Robert Riley taking an excellent position wide here as Porteous won the ball. There was Riley trying to steer that into the far corner. Couldn't have been closer. Now Scott. Well, trying to find Ross. He gave it straight to McKinnon. And Waters is in behind Douglas again. A chance for Kilmarnock. Sludden waits in the middle. Normally so deadly from that position, John Sludden. Archibald and Riley clashing on the far side. It's Archibald who does well for Cowden Beef. But it's Kilmarnock coming forward again with Burns. Just no let up in the pressure. As Sludden turns in the area. And under pressure, couldn't get the cross in. But some fine play here from Kilmarnock. The ball played long there for Woody Waters to chase. He's in behind Hugh Douglas. Looks up, spots John Sludden. Sends the ball across and Sludden couldn't get the touch. There's Malone. Get it underneath that with Ross. Too high for both. Picked up now by Hamill. Flexley wins it back for Kilmarnock. Good ball out of defence. Here's Tommy Barnes. The Mark Strikers trying to remain onside. There's Willie Waters. A great chance now for Sludden. He was onside. That was a great opportunity passed up by Sludden. Well, great awareness here shown by Willie Waters taking this first time the header into space for Sludden. And he will undoubtedly feel he should have done better. Here's Colin Scott trying to get a cross in as Tate arrives to make life difficult. And Tate did well, closing him down. There's Archibald looking for this opening in the area as it's played in by Malone. Well, that could have been dangerous. Tom Tate left it and Paul Flexney did the only sensible thing by turning this away for the corner kick. Making absolutely certain there was no chance of an on goal. Geddes is in trouble, there's Spence! Off the line by Porteous, there's Malone. And thumped clear in the end, gratefully by Spence. But a let off undoubtedly there for Kilmarnock, they're still not out of trouble. Up goes Ross with the header and Bobby Geddes has the ball safely back in his custody but he will be a little bit unhappy with his performance for this corner kick. Get his underneath that, looked to be a straightforward catch, he didn't make it, and Billy Spence had a great chance for Cowden Beef. Good stride forward there by Flexney. Tate playing it wide, he was looking for Burns, I think, the ball just too far ahead of... Kilmarnock midfield man striding forward there and it's Tom Spence who wants to take the throw quickly and there goes the half time whistle applause from the Kilmarnock fans things looking rosy at the moment thanks to Paul Flexney's fourth minute goal it came in the simplest of fashions Tommy Barnes taking a free kick over to the far side flighting it right across the far post area where Flexney was unmarked and nodded ahead and that's what makes the half time score Kelman at one, Cowden beat now. So welcome back to Rugby Park as Cowden beat get the match underway again and Kilmarnock I think may have some anxious moments to endure before the end because having looked so impressive following the opening goal they have slackened just a little bit and Cowden Beef could transform the game with a goal so we may see a very quick start from Kilmarnock I'm sure they've been well wound up in the dressing room at half time there's Ian Porteous 
Now Montgomery. Sludden lays it back. There's Tate. Now Riley. That's good play by Riley. Created the shooting chance very well indeed. He certainly has been one of the better Kilmarnock players in the side this afternoon. Takes this ball and looks up. Tries to find the opening. Creates it for himself. But the goalkeeper positioning was good. Lament's clearance not very decisive. Helped on by Watt. And there's Gus Malone going back. He's the player who has delegated the task of ensuring that Tommy Burns didn't have too big an influence in proceedings. That's a good play by Spence. There's Sludden. Couldn't quite control it well enough as the ball was driven into him. John Sludden again getting a chance as Spence fired this across. Couldn't play it beyond the keeper. Still, Kilmarnock have the corner kick. Riley to the far post, up goes Flexney. Well beaten, and there's some damage there, I think, for Glenn Kerr. Appears to be the player down. A head clash there with Flexney. The ball out of play now, and referee McGinley hasn't yet spotted the player lying flat out on the six yard line. He has now, though. Here's how it happened, Flexney coming in, the heads clashed, and that really does look serious for Glenn Kerr, the Cowden Beef captain. It's a very familiar test for Glenn Kerr. Well, the skipper recovers. Lefty blow he took from Flexney. Well, again, Kerr is there for Cowden Beef. Now Malone. McKenzie inside. Here's Gus Malone. Wanted to switch the play, but couldn't find anyone in position. So he's back to the right with McKenzie. Here's Malone once more. And McKenzie. Well, good running by McKenzie. And a fine effort. Well, what a relief for Kilmarnock. That was great individual play from Alan McKenzie. Showing a lot of confidence here, taking on Spence, then going past another defender before letting fly with the left foot, and that was certainly very close. Porteous forward, helped on its way by Waters. Colin Scott's header was an attempt at a pass back, Sludden intercepted, but what does some good work once again at the back for Curtin Beef. Here's Hugh Douglas breaking. Well struck by Douglas, the shot was much too direct, but he was given the chance to come surging forward. Well, there's the Kilmarnock bench, Jim Fleeting on the right, Jim McSherry in the middle, Frank Coulson on the left, the management team here at Rugby Park. The layoff from Ross, here's McKenzie, that's through for Duffy, it's a brilliant goal from Cowden Beath. Rugby Park is stunned as Darren Duffy equalises with 13 minutes left. Played forward there by Malone. This goal's been coming. Ross with a layoff. Back it goes to McKenzie. Slide rule pass. Duffy using his pace. And Dennis couldn't get there quickly enough. Well, what a face up now for Kilmarnock. Darren Duffy has looked very good indeed since he came on. The referee across to talk to the linesman on the near side. Roman Carnegie and Mike McGinley having a little chat. I'm not sure what took place, but there's going to be trouble for one of the Cowden Beef players, I reckon. Not quite sure what this was all about. Eric Archibald with the outstretched arms, the universal look of innocence, but whatever Norman Carnegie spotted is enough to have very Archibald booked. It looks as though it may have been for some kind of gesture to the Kilmarnock fans. 
the Nazi were trying to explain that to the referee, but the rules are very strict about that sort of thing now, and referee Mike McGinley implementing them to the full. So Archibald is booked as Cowden beat equalise. And what a finish now for Kilmarnock. Could it all go wrong? Corbin going so comfortably so far, but Cowden beat have been revitalised by the introduction of the two substitutes, McKenzie and Duffy, who combined for that goal. Can Kilmarnock hit back quickly? Archibald's clearance. Here's Kevin Hamill. If the scoreline stays the same, it'll be a question of the result involving Sterling Albion being crucial Sterling would indeed need to win by a lot of goals to prevent Kilmarnock going forward if they drew that's a handball decision against Kerr it was a draw here at Kilmarnock Sterling would need to score seven against his five there's the handball Bums orchestrating things Dave McKinnon is also there Lob there for Waters. Well, the careful that he has set piece. A little bit of play acting there. Dave McKinnon was involved with Tommy Burns. You can see McKinnon and Burns play acting before that little lob looking for Willie Waters. They have the corner kick though, come on up. Played in by Riley. Great head again by Flexley Handball! It is a penalty kick to come on up. Booking two for Hamill. Deliberate handball on the goal line, of course. There can be no argument from Hamill. A yellow card, but more important from the Kilmarnock point of view is the fact that they have a penalty kick. What a great header this was from Flexney. And Hamill saw it dipping under the crossbar. That's why he handled it. So a crucial moment here, requiring a cool head. Billy Lambert on the line, it looks as though Dave McKinnon will take the penalty. McKinnon against Lambert. 2-1 to Kilmarnock. Nine minutes of the match left. That should settle it. A penalty entrusted to one of the most experienced campaigners in the field, Dave McKinnon. Thundering at heart, straight at the keeper. Counting on him, diving. You see Julie do McKinnon gets his second goal of the season only for Kilmarnock. So with three minutes of extra time played at the end of the match, reflecting time lost during the second half, referee Mike McGinley checking his watch all the time, checking with his linesman. They appear to be satisfied. And just wait to hear the action of the final whistle. There's Wild with a header. haven't been seen at Rugby Park for a long, long time. Yeah! Yeah! Oh, the Kilmarnock players come out. The pitch having been cleared, the Kilmarnock players come out to take a bow. In various states of unrest. Uh, there's the goal-scoring hero of the first half, Paul Flexney. Also the man who set up the penalty kick with a fine header. Tommy Burns there, racing over to the fans. Well, Tommy Burns has been in this situation many times before, but not in a promotion-winning team, having spent his entire career at Celtic until now. A blue and white scarf around Tommy Bunn's neck seems a little bit out of place. So, a moment to savour in the history of Kamala Football Club. Back from the oblivion of the second division to first division football next season. And they will certainly be a welcome addition.
Dave McKinnon, Tommy Burns, he used to be in opposite sides for Rangers and Celtic. How about today? How did that feel? Well, it just felt the same for me, Joe. It was uh, fabulous. And I think, you know, obviously maybe people look to think, oh, Celtic Football Club is bigger and everything like that. But at the end of the day, it meant just as much to Kilmarnock Football Club as what it has in previous years with the Celtic. So I'm just delighted for the people that support the club. And, you know, the many years I've been through the, the bad times. And I hope this is the first of the many good times we can give them. Is this what you came for? No, I came for the money, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope it's plenty after today. Anyway, you took that penalty kick, it was a bit tense. How did you feel about that? Well, Jock, uh, as I've early, I said earlier, at the start of the season, we missed a few penalties and unfortunately it was left to me. So with this recurring nightmare over the last few months, it has actually gone to a penalty in the last minute. But <laughs> thankfully, we went in, Willie. <laughs> For your bonus. <laughs> now, when you see this, when you see this, it went straight into the middle of the goal. Was that quite deliberate? Well, <laughs> they always put some here. They always put some here. Yeah, the goal has stood up. The yeah, thing is, Jock, you've shown it in TV now, and goalkeepers next season are going to know my plan. But no, you just blast it in that situation because if you miss, then you, at least you've had a, a go and you've hit it with everything you've got. If you place it and the goalkeeper saves it, then you're the biggest idiot that's ever been. Jim, what range of emotions did you go through this afternoon? I went through everything actually. People say I'm quite cool and calm, and I must confess I was quite cool and calm during the game. But you know, there's times when you score the second goal, like, and a tear comes to your eye. And I must confess, when you get up to see your, your folks, your parents, your, your wife, and your son and daughter watching the game, you get a wee bit high. And I'm still a wee bit high, you know, I'll come down maybe next Tuesday or something like that. A low point though, when the crowd meet equalised, I take it. Very, very much so. But then the annoying thing about it is football managers actually watch the game, and, and at that time we were looking crowd meet into it, everybody was sitting back, so we would have a go at them. And you don't like giving a go in a day such as today, but I've got to learn from, from games like this, because hopefully we'll have a few more of them, job. It has been a very tough season though, Jim, to come out of the second division. I mean, how, how have you handled that all the way through? The only joy I get out about out of it is the fact that Wraith Rovers and Allo, I think, is only two sides have done it before. You know, that's so command like I've done something that other sides haven't done before, and that's good down and go straight back up. It's been a horrific season um, everywhere, you know, off the park as well. But, you know, it's been very hard for us because Kilmarnock has been everybody's cup final this season. Everyone's wanted to beat Kilmarnock and everywhere they go. Because, maybe because of the support, maybe because of the, the likes of Tommy Burns is playing for us and Dave McKinnon playing for us. And maybe they just like beating Kilmarnock. Well, with your first uh, period now of development, have you a programme for that, a timescale? Well, remember, I don't involved in the playing side. Um, I'm involved in the, the development of Kilmarnock Football Club for providing money and providing facilities for fans. And most certainly we've got a full development programme for that, and I'd be more than happy to sit down and go through it with you. I take it in the meantime, though, the manager's job is safe. Well, remember one thing. Someone said about the pressures attached to being chairman of a football club. I had added pressures. If I'd fired my brother, my mother would never have spoke to me. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Kilmarnock. Well...